you two. Welcome to Friday's comprehension session, our very last comprehension session of our home learning. I've loved doing your videos and seeing all the super work that you've been doing. I think our reading and our comprehension skills have improved so, so much. So a really, really big well done to you all and well done for completing my writing challenges as well. If you are one of the children who has been doing all of them every single day. So a really, really big well done. We're going to look at one more text today and then you can have a lovely weekend at home before we see you back in school on Monday. So Friday the 5th of March. Our learning question for today says, can I answer questions about a poem? We have had a poem before in comprehension, but not recently in this new book. So a poem, you know, we've thought about poems in schools. We know that some poems can rhyme, don't we? And there's lots of thinking about language and rhythm and all sorts of things like that. And poems usually are meant to sound quite fun when we are reading them. We're meant to be thinking about the expression and making them sound X. Exciting, aren't we? So we've got some retrieval, some inference, and then there is a vocabulary question today when we think about words that rhyme. Okay. So it is called today Tea with Auntie Mabel, page 10. Now the word tea, we sometimes use tea for the meal we have in the evening, don't we? Breakfast, dinner, and tea. But in this case, tea is meaning to have a cup of tea. And have a look at my teacup. My teacup's got a saucer and it's quite a posh cup and saucer, isn't it? So I think maybe Auntie Mabel might be quite a posh lady and we're having a nice posh cup of tea. So maybe you want to have a little predict, maybe you want to have a think about the poem. I'll give you a little clue, Auntie Mabel has got some rules when you go for tea. See if you might be able to guess what some of Auntie Mabel's rules are. Okay, think about some of our tricky words that we might come across in the poem. So in this word, we have got O-W making an O sound like snow. So L, elb, O's. Elbows, show me where your elbows are. Those are your elbows, aren't they? I wonder what Auntie Mabel's rule might be about elbows. Elbows. Okay, this one, oh, he is making an oo sound. So this word is sh, oos, shoes, shoes. Okay, this is quite a tricky word. This is the word sugar. Sugar. It's almost as if the letter S needs to make a sh sound in that word, sh, ug, uh, sugar, sugar, you might have sugar in your tea. Uh, this is something you might have with your tea. So the letter U and I work together in this word to make an I sound. So we've got B, is, bisque, it's, biscuits, biscuits. You might have biscuits with your tea. Wonder what your favourite kind of biscuit is. Uh, oh, this is something that can happen when you have biscuits. Our oh, letter B in this word is a silent letter. So sometimes you will come across this in your phonics at some point. Sometimes M and B can work together to make an mmm sound. So this word is cr um crumb. We don't sound the B, it's a silent letter. Sometimes when we eat biscuits, we can make lots of crumbs, can't we? They can be messy to eat biscuits. Uh, this time we've got letter O, making an O sound. So the word is t o -ld. told. Do as you are told. Maybe that's one of Mabel's, Auntie Mabel's rules. Uh, this one there, we've got letter A, making the A sound, the long vowel sound at the start. We've got our L E. This word is able. Able. If you are able to do something, it means that you can do it. If you are unable to do something, it means you can't. So able, you can do something. And this word, this is a word that's in the poem lots and lots and lots. Uh, 
okay? And it's a word with an apostrophe there. And the apostrophe is for a missing letter. Now, if you're in Mrs. Wood's phonics, I know you've done contractions with missing letters, haven't you? So this word would be the word do not, but it's been squashed together to make the word don't, hasn't it? Don't. So the apostrophe shows there is a missing O because the word don't is a contracted version, a shortened version of do not. So it's don't. And Auntie Mabel's got lots and lots of rules about things that she does not want you to do if you go to tea. OK, we've got some words now then where we're going to think about the definition of them. So remember, some words can be tricky for us to decode and some words might be tricky because we might not know what they mean. So we've got the word et, e, seti. And a seti, if you're not sure, is a long, soft seat. You might have a seti in your living room and you might call it or know it as a sofa. So a sofa is another word for a seti. It's a long soft seat that you can sit on. And usually it's meant for more than one person, which is why it is so long. A seti, another word for a sofa. Okay, then we've got this word. The letter I in this word needs to make an I sound because this word is dining. Dining. Now, dining is the activity of eating a meal. If you are dining out, it means you're going to eat your meal out. So our dinner hall could be called a dining hall. And some people in their house have a dining room. It's a room where they eat their meals. It's a room with a table and chairs where you might sit and eat your meals. So you might have a dining room in your house. I haven't got one in my house. But you might have a dining room, a room that is for eating the meals. Okay. And we've got this word, so we've got D and G making the J sound and I and E making the E sound. So this word says B or J, E, budgie. And a budgie is a small, brightly coloured bird, often kept as a pet. So you might have one or you might know someone who has one. Some people can have a budgie, a little brightly coloured bird and you'll usually have it in a cage, a budgie, it's the type of bird of a pet. Okay, I would like you then to have a little read of your text and then I am going to read it as well after because I do like reading poems. So it's Tea with Auntie Mabel on page 10. And we just want to talk about one extra little bit of the poem. So there's a word here in bold. And I think we have talked about this before. Sometimes when you have a word in bold, which is usually in a non-fiction text, you will find the word somewhere else, maybe at the back of the book in a glossary, and it tells you the meaning of the word. So this here has got split diagraph e sound. So we would read it as p e k p. And it tells us at the bottom that it is a type of dog and it's short for peas. So a peak, a kind of dog. Okay, so I would like you to have a little read of page 10, tea with Auntie Mabel, and then come back. I'll have a little read and we can do some practice questions as well. Off you go. Okay, did you enjoy reading that one? Hope you did. I'm going to have a little read as well. If you ever go to tea with my auntie Mabel, never put your elbows on the dining room table. Always wipe your shoes if you've been in the garden. Don't ever burp. If you do, say pardon. Don't put your feet on the new settee. If she offers you a sugar lump, don't take three. Don't dunk your biscuits. Don't make crumbs. Don't bite nails and don't suck thumbs. Don't rock the budgie. Don't tease the peak. Speak when you're spoken to or else don't speak. Do as you're told and if you're not able, don't go to tea with my auntie Mabel. Because if you're not able to do all these things, you should not be going to tea. She's got a lot of rules, hasn't she, Auntie Mabel? I'm sure you noticed some of the rhyming words. 
we've got what we call rhyming couplets, haven't we? So the lines next to each other are the words that rhyme. That's going to help us out with one of our questions today. Now, let's look at some practice questions then. The first one is one that's like a multiple choice one, but we have to circle the right answer. So it says, what shouldn't, so should not, what shouldn't you do if you go to tea with Auntie Mabel? Circle your answer. So what shouldn't you do? Should you not do as you're told? Should you not speak when you're spoken to? Or should you not dunk your biscuits? Which one shouldn't you do? Which one should you not do? Let's have a little look. Does it say you need to do as you're told? Let's have a little look. Do as you're told. So you should do that one. Does it tell us about speaking when you're spoken to? Speak when you're spoken to, so you should do that. But it says, don't duck, dunk biscuits. So the thing that you shouldn't do, you should not do, is dunk your biscuits. So that's the one we circle. You should not, you shouldn't dunk your biscuits because it's got the word don't, hasn't it? Okay, which word in the poem rhymes with garden? And we've talked about the pattern, haven't we, for the rhyme? So we should be able to have a little look. So find the word garden. I can find it there. Look, there's the word garden. Always wipe your shoes if you've been in the garden. Don't ever burp if you do. Say, pardon. Pardon and garden rhyme, don't they? And we've talked before how sometimes the rhyming words will be spelt the same, but sometimes they might not be. So pardon and garden, even though they sound the same, don't have the same spelling at the end, do they? Pardon and garden. Right, this one, we're not going to write down, but I would like you to tell your grown-up the answer to it. Would you like to go for tea at Auntie Mabel's house, why or why not? I've made a spelling mistake there, haven't I? Let's correct that one. Would you like to go for tea at Auntie Mabel's house, why or why not? Have a little chat with your grown up. Can you say yes or no and give a reason why? Something to do with what we've read today. I would be interested to see. I'm not sure I would like to go for Auntie Mabel's for tea because I think she's got too many rules and I think I would forget them all. Okay. Now your challenge today then, once you've done your questions, I'd like to see the page in your book, but then your challenge today is to think about some rhyming lines. I'm wondering if you can write a line that rhymes with my line that I'm going to give you. So remember, you have to think about the word at the end of the line and try to find one that rhymes with it. And remember, if it rhymes with it, it means the end of the word sounds the same. So this line says, don't forget to say please. So you need a word that ends in ease, don't you? Pl ease. What could you have that also ends in the E's part to make it rhyme? Don't forget to say please, something, 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 E's. It's got to be a word that ends in E's. What you might want to do is see if you can come up with a few different words that would rhyme with please, and then see if you can make a line up that rhymes with it and that fits. I've given you three today, see if you can have a go at all of them. So don't forget to say please, do, 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 ease. Next one is don't feed the fish, don't stroke the cat. We need a word at the end that rhymes with cat. Don't feed the fish, don't stroke the cat. So it's got to end in at, hasn't it? We need a rhyming word with cat. Do, 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 do. And apt word at the end. 
And then last one is don't smile, don't cry. Do, 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 do. It's got to be a word that ends in the I sound, doesn't it? Because cry has got the I sound at the end. So we need a word at the end that rhymes with cat, a word at the end that rhymes with cry. So I thought that would be a fun little challenge as our last writing challenge for our home learning. See if you can do one of them. If you would love to do all three of them, I would love to see. And if you would prefer not to write it down, you might get your grown-up to video you saying the rhyming lines that you came up with. I would love to see what rhyming lines you have managed to create. I know last time we did something similar. We did a really, really, really super job. So go and enjoy your last activity, your last writing challenge your last comprehension session. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you so much to you and your grown-ups for all of your hard work. Your commitment to your home learning has been really, really super and we can't wait to see you on Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye, you two.